well fed. And it's difficult to see these structures, but you can always see the bone. And here's another picture showing the um, beautiful anatomy. So how do you do this? Well, there's a very famous uh, portal called the Portal of Navisir. And it is the technique wherein you can actually go into and see the suprascapular nerve. And this is actually my technique. It's nothing new. It's certainly well described in the orthopedic literature. And the junction you look for is the posterior border of the AC joint. And then here you have the spine. And so right in the middle of this V, you see what we call a soft spot. And uh, it's about two centimeters medial to the V here, you stick your needle down. And here's a picture of the needle going to the fossa, and then you'll see the dye spread. And here's a, a, like a CT uh, reconstruction on a cadaver, where you, you can see how the fluid spreads along this fossa. It's like a valley, and this is like a river. Basically all it is is just a, a river. And here's a picture. Now, this is done out of plane, of course, you can see how the needle is coming down and touching bone. In this particular case, I could not see the artery, I couldn't see the nerve, and my reference point was just to touch the bone. In the next video here, oh, oh sorry, oh God, it just went too far advanced. I have to go back. Sorry about that. This, this is a picture of the injectate. Now, look, you see the fluid between the bone and the muscle? Basically, you're lifting up the supraspinatus muscle, and it creates like a little pocket of fluid. And that's how you know that the fluid is in the proper location. It's a very simple procedure and um, you'll find it very easy to do. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let me skip over this. Um, I had this on hide mode, but somehow or another it didn't hide. Um, so I have to apologize. Intercostal. The intercostal nerve is something which you will have many opportunities to treat. Many patients have intercostal neuralgia, and ultrasound is really quite an invaluable technique to help you identify your landmarks, and most of all, to help you avoid pneumothorax. And the anatomy of the intercostal nerve is well known to all of you, so I'm not going to read this in the interest of time. And here you see the three layers, the innermost, inner and outer intercostal muscles, and the needle is here. And if you could see the orientation, vein, artery, nerve. So the key factor, at least in my practice, is if I could see the vessel, I know I, all I need to do is go call that to it. And um, oftentimes, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to see the nerve. But the vessel, I find generally you're able to see. And now, what's important to realize is that as the go medially, the nerves become truly intercostal. When it's out more laterally, it actually is more subcostal. However, Doing from this approach presents a greater potential risk for pneumothorax unless you are very clear with your ultrasound. But most of us do the injection about seven to eight centimeters lateral where the membrane is actually more muscular. Now, if you look at this picture, you'll notice that you can see a vessel here and this corresponds to roughly the various locations you can identify it. And if you want, you can also put a color doctor on. So this tells you this is obviously a vascular structure, and you can see the pleural underneath it. Now, this is a picture of the muscles and the pleural. Here's the rib, and we're obviously in the transverse plane. And here, this picture shows you the three distinct layers, and of course, you have the pleura down here. So you would expect to see the vessel approximately here. Now, here's a picture of the lung sliding. But 
if you notice, can you see this structure that's just superficial to the plural that's sliding? You know, for the life of me, I can't figure out what that is. And, um, but I noticed this, and I said, gee, this must be an anomaly, because this happens to be my rib. And I, I showed this to my kids, and they said, you know, Daddy, we knew you were always weird. So, <laughs> so anyway, now here is the vessel that I'm talking about. And here you can see the vessel very, very clearly. You can see the plural. So you can see that your nerve has to be just caught that to it. So even though you can't see it, you can still very easily get to it. Try to go to my next uh, slide. Now, here's another anomaly. You see two vessels there? This is another rib of mine. <laughs> so, anyway, so you're going to see a lot of anomalies, but I just want to emphasize the clarity that you can see the plural and the vessels. Now, how do you do this block? Well, there's a couple of approach. You can do the inline approach, and this shows you the transducer and the needle orientation, and the outer plane technique. I personally think the outer plane technique is a lot easier because you could just hit the lower edge of the rib and kind of slide it down, the traditional we, technique that we saw, and then you could have the needle just placed adjacent to the vessel. And here's a picture of where the fluid was injected. And I just, uh, for the interest of time, I can't show you many videos, but this is one that was uh, contributed by Dr. Shibata, and you can go online and see it. Now, the paravertebral block, this is a really uh, a fun block to do. And the technique is you could, for example, do a single shot, a continuous. The authority on this is um, Dr. Eichenberger. So I feel kind of embarrassed talking about a subject when you have the world authority here. And here's a picture of the anatomy. And you have to understand the paravertebral space is wedged between the head and neck of the rib, and the um, medial side is the intervertebral disc, the foramen, the anterior lateral side is the parietal pleural with its endothoracic fascia, and the posterior lateral side is the superior costal transverse ligament. And this is, um, you can see these on ultrasound, and in particular, you can see this particular ligament. So I just want to show you this ligament here, and this was a work, again, done by Dr. Morigold and Dr. Eichenberger here. So how do you do this block? Well, there's a couple of approaches. The traditional approach was the parasagittal approach. However, you can't see the tip of the needle very well. The loss of resistance is somewhat variable, so it's not always that dependable. Dr. Shabata described the transverse approach and um, the problem with this approach is that oftentimes you ha have the potential risk of injecting into the frame. In other words, when the needle goes and it slides underneath the, um, the transverse process, it can cause, I mean, if it goes too far, you can inject centrally. So other approaches have been described, the oblique approach, intercostal approach, but I'll talk about the, um, the traditional uh, parasitial approach, because I think that's the easiest approach. And so the, basically, you follow the traditional landmarks, you feel the spine, you go laterally about two and a half centimeters. And here, you can see how the needle is entering the space. And here's a picture, <clears throat> the transducer position in the parasagittal plane, you can see where the pleura is, and here would be your transverse process here, and the fluid as it's injected. And uh, I borrowed this from Dr. Carmarker here, and this gives you a very, very good picture. And if you have your patients take a deep breath, you'll see the pleura sliding back and forth. Here's your transverse process, and the superior cost of transverse ligament is right about here. So the key is to come right 
above the pearl. And when I do this technique, I inject some fluid at this point, and my end point is the depression of the pleura. You oftentimes can't see the tip of the needle very clearly, in large part because of the angulation of the uh, needle relative to the transducer, but you could always see the depression of the pleura. And here's a nice picture where you can see the space right here. It's a small, very, very thin hypochoic. You can see it's probably no more than maybe two millimeters, and it's so incredibly close to the pleura. So your target space is very, very narrow. And here's an example where the local anesthetic increases the space, so you can see how it gets kind of thickened. And um, we just want to show you the superior cause of transverse ligament, and if you want to see it here, this is the orientation. This is important because it gives you a, a reference point on how to um, see the anatomy. Now, there's a big question of catheters, and um, the problem with the catheter is that you don't know where it really goes. It can go into any of these uh, spaces. I'm so, oh, I'm sorry. And this is a, um, a CT rendering where it shows the catheter can go into anywhere. Now, there's some great videos, and one of which comes from USRA, and there's a video by Dr. Modis, which shows you the depression. Um, now, I had a little trouble trying to import this uh, video, but I have it on another file. Let me just show you on the other file. This is a picture from Dr. Shibata's using the transverse approach. 